Hello friends, in this instruction video, we'll work together to install UiPath Orchestrator robots, connect them to the orchestrator as well as connect the studio to the orchestrator. So what we have here is a Windows 2019 standard server with no additional capability, just the basic uh, default vanilla install of the server, uh, which is also a domain controller. So ideally it's recommended not to install it on a domain controller, but this is kind of the procedure and the steps will be same even if you install it on a separate server. So we'll start the UiPath Orchestrator installation. The installation checks for prerequisites and report them. And as we go along, we will be identifying the requisite steps and resolving them. Uh, whatever like additional features of windows are needed any additional components are needed they'll be installed along with the installation so as you can see it is complaining about uh, IIS with certain features not being there so we'll switch over to the server manager and install these components We will select from the Manage drop-down, Add Roles and Features, and we'll be doing a role-based or feature-based installation. We'll select the server from the pool. And here we will select additional components within IIS. As you can see, I have selected these missing components like Windows Authentication is selected here, and ASP .NET 4.7 instead of 4.5 is selected and the remaining other application development features have been selected. WebSockets is here. So we'll go next. And next again and install them. The additional feature installation is complete and after that when I try to install the, start the orchestrator again it is no longer complaining about those missing IIS modules. I'll click on install. To install uh, UiPath Orchestra, you need to have IS URL rewrite module installed. So next we'll go through the installation steps for uh, this URL rewrite module. You can search for IS URL rewrite extension and this page will come up in the search and from here, we will install the extension. It has downloaded and we will open the file. It will install the web platform installer 5.1 and from this additional steps need to be done to install the URL rewrite module. We'll go ahead and click on install here. and then we can exit this installation. Now let's try to start the installation again. It will take a moment to initialize. Okay, the next requisite is ASP.NET Core IIS module. This can be installed by running the .NET Core hosting bundle version 3.1 or higher. So we'll go ahead and address this requirement next. You can search for .NET Core hosting bundle installer and download the file. I'm running the file now.
the installation has completed and now we can try installing UiPath Orchestrator again but first uh, do exit from the previous installation and then retry it because it does not recognize uh, in-flight installations so we have crossed that step and we are ready to move to the next step so we can have we can select insights installation and test installation uh, test automation also so the iis settings need to be specified you need to provide the fully qualified host name which should be re resolvable on all your client machines you'll choose the 443 port and verify the port availability also So the next requirement is that you need to have a certificate uh, with a local signing authority installed on the domain controller or the machine where you're installing the orchestrator as well as on the client machine machines. So utilizing PowerShell script, we can create such a certificate. Even though it's a local certificate, but we'll have our own certification authority and the client machines will install the certification authority so that way uh, you will not run into a self-signed certificate issue to create the self-signed certificate we'll be running these four commands exactly like this be careful to change your domain name to your machine's fully qualified domain name and if you want you can change the password also so this password will be needed to extract the certificate onto the client machines and here we are generating a certificate as well as writing that certificate to c colon slash temp dot pfx make sure to create the c colon slash temp directory first so let's go ahead and create the temp folder which generally does not exist in windows and then you will need to run an elevated powershell so a regular PowerShell won't work. You will need to launch PowerShell with the run as administrator option. And now let's one by one copy our commands and place it in the PowerShell window. The certificate is created. Now we are creating the present password variable and then we are creating the path variable and then we are exporting the certificate to a file system file to be used on our client machines now you can see that in the temp folder you have the certificate so make a note of it as well as the password you specified in this command here this will be used to install the certificates on the client machines now let's start the installation and see whether it complains or not about the certificate being available Now if we click on next, let's see. So it's complaining about untrusted root. The certificate chain processed but terminated in a root certificate which is not trusted by the trust provider. To address this, we'll be importing our certificate into the trusted root certificates. To do that, go to the certificate you just created in the temp folder and right click on the certificate and install PFX. You will do local machine because you want to be available to all the users. 
the password is password we can mark it as exportable also and then place it in the following key store trusted root certification authorities the import is successful now let's try maybe we'll need to restart the installation we go back and once we do next yes it is indicating showing a uh, pool identity pool account but be sure to choose a custom account otherwise you will get an error 500 later on so use a custom windows domain account please next step is basically to specify your sql server settings your sql server can be on this machine itself or on a remote machine uh, in production uh, situations or enterprise situations uh, it's generally on a different machine but the only difference to connect to a different uh, remote machine or a local machine is basically uh, that the host name will be different and the database name is going to be created there itself and but you can uh, use windows integrated authentication for authentication with windows domain controller or you can have a custom sql server authentication so we'll go ahead and start installing our sql server if you already have a uh, readily available sql server then you can just skip to the next step and key in the host name and the authentication details for it we have mounted the sql server installation dvd to the e drive and we'll start the setup for the sql server standard 2019 so you can directly go to installation new sql server standalone installation uh, you can click on that link accept the license terms will not use uh, updates but you can use them optionally if you need to you can ignore these two warnings computer domain controller windows firewall will be selecting these uh, we need database engine services shared features you can leave them alone you don't need them you don't need replication But a basic engine is needed for UiPath to install its database. So we will use a default instance. So you uh, will be using Windows authentication mode and you need to add your current user as the SQL Server Administrator or any additional users uh, which you want to access the SQL Server. These are domain users, so from the Active Directory controller. You can hit Next. add current user or any additional user for this role you can ignore the controller node
and hit dot install. SQL Server has finished installing. You can close this dialog box. And now we'll go back to our orchestrator installation. You'll be choosing the SQL Server host name. This is the current machine, so I'll be using the same host name, but you can utilize a remote machine host name. There should be firewall connectivity between the two machines, and they should be reachable over the same network. I'll be using Windows integrated authentication. For the identity server also, we uh, we need to specify the signing certificate subject name, which will be the domain name which we specified while creating the certificate. SQL server hostname needs to be specified a couple of times. So this is for the update server. The same uh, SQL server instance we'll be using. Uh, this is for the Elasticsearch component. You can leave it blank. These are the two passwords for the tenant and the administrator account for orchestrator. Please remember these passwords because these will be used to connect to the admin dashboard as well as to join tenants. You can hit next. Uh, once again, for the insights also, we'll be using the same SQL Server instance. The instance is same, but as you'll see, the databases created will be with different names. For the test automation also, we need to specify the SQL Server. So in a production environment, you might have different SQL Servers for each of the components. But this is more of a demonstration. So you can diverge from it as needed. Now we are ready to install, start the installation. The installation is completed and now we can move on to verifying the orchestrator installation. So you will go to HTTPS. And you should be prompted with this self-signed warning. Uh, accept the risk. Username is admin. And password is the one which we specified during installation. So we have successfully installed the orchestrator. Next steps are connecting with the tenants, clients, robots, as well as the studio. So, but before we do that, we will have to activate our orchestrator installation. We can skip this tool. And if we go to click on unlicensed, we can either activate online or activate offline. We will try to activate online. I have uh, from the, your email, you will have the activation code or when you downloaded the evaluation version. You can specify production on production or hybrid. I will do production. So it has activated successfully. Now I have switched over to a different machine, which is the client machine, joined to the same domain, as well as on the same network as the orchestrator machine. We'll be installing the UI Path Studio here, and then connecting it to the orchestrator.
So we'll be doing custom since we have the enterprise version for advanced user, accept the terms and configure. We'll be using automation developer installation as well as we'll click on advanced settings and extensions, additional extensions, for example, uh, Java and VMware and remote desktop will be selecting. And then we'll click on install. You will get a USC warning. Since it's a domain joint machine, I had to supply the administrator credentials for the installation to work. This may or may not be needed in your scenario. So UiPath Studio has completed installation and we'll launch the studio now. To be able to connect to the, the studio to the orchestrator, you will need a machine key. So go to your orchestrator admin console, click on machines, add a new machine and give it a name. And if you do edit machine after that, you can get the machine key here. So this is needed to authenticate the studio to the orchestrator. So we will start the studio now. We have the machine key available. We will click on more options. Go to connect to orchestrator. We'll give the orchestrator URL. And provide the machine key. Uh, actually, there is a typo in the URL. So it's complaining about a certificate. So we have created, remember we created a certificate earlier. Uh, I have copied that certificate over to this machine. And now I'll try to install it here. We'll install it for the current user only, but you can do local machine also. With the installation, we gave the password as password. So, but in your case, it may be different. Uh, whatever you use to generate the certificate, that password needs to be specified. So import is successful. Let's try again. Actually, it needs to be placed in the trusted root certificates. So let me do that. So this is different, you will put it in the trusted root certification authorities. And let's try, maybe we have to restart the studio. Actually it worked. To fix this robot not found issue, we, we have to enable smart robots. So do that, to do that, go to the tenant. And if you go to manage access, for your current user, the admin user or any other user, you should do edit. 
and in the second step you have to enable these two options attended robot as well as unattended robot enable a personal workspace and then update it also you have to create a folder like we have created a win2 folder and in here you need to add the user admin user as well as the machine uh, actually the machine is auto created and if you go back to your machines uh, you have to rename your machine to the host name of your machine and also you have to in edit machine assign the licenses if the licenses are not assigned it will say that licenses are not available so out of your 10 evaluation license you can enable five floating licenses and update so after this step if you come back to your assistant so if you go to your assistant and click on orchestrator settings you will be able to so i will demonstrate it again i'll sign out from here disconnect and then i'll connect back again with the machine key so this time and i need to sign in also now it will show connected and licensed and after that you can launch your UiPath Studio and you will be led to this particular screen where you have the you have the welcome screen for UiPath and if you expand it so this way we have created smart robot and which is tied to the machine and a user account via a folder and when you connect using the machine key it automatically associates it with the user account as well as the smart folder and derive the licenses from the tenant so uh, best of luck uh, installing your uipath enterprise latest version uh, do leave comments if you face any problems and i'll try my best to address those thank you